talented Indian youngster Arjun Erigaisi makes his way to the stage. He's going to take on the one and only Magnus Carlsen and in a very rare occurrence, Magnus is already on the stage. He's already on the board and Arjun comes a bit late. But he's in time for the game. Magnus has the white pieces. Arjun has black. Round number 14 of World Blitz 2023. Magnus opens with 1e4. We have the Sicilian. Is it going to be the open Sicilian? Not really. It's the King's Indian attack that Magnus has played. Maybe he's taking a leaf out of the book of Richard Rapport, who played the same opening against Arjun a few days ago at the Gashimo Memorial. Knight d2 played. Knight comes out to f6. The general idea of this opening with white is to keep your king safe, have some center control, and it's basically a reversed King's Indian defense. a4 played. Arjun plays at 6. He's delaying castling with his king. And now after rook e1, he castles it out. Maybe in some ways he's made a luft for the knight here in case white pushes the pawn to e5. That seems to be his plan. The King's Indian attack used to be a favorite of Bobby Fisher. He used to play it on some occasions. And here Magnus takes his time. Look at the time on the clock. Magnus is down by 30 seconds. That's not very common. He's actually a bit confused whether he should go e5 or not. He first plays his queen to e2. In order to bolster the e-pawn even further when he pushes it to e5. That's his idea. Arjun plays his pawn to b6 and now e5 comes in. The knight goes back to h7. Arjun's plan is to move the rook away and the knight will settle down nicely on f8. The knight goes to f1. Main ideas are h4, knight h2, bishop f4, knight g4 and white launches an attack on the king side. Black must do something on the queen side in order to create counterplay. That's how the battle lines are drawn in the king's Indian attack. Let's see how Arjun continues. Now the time is almost even on the clock. Arjun plays his bishop to a6. Interesting move. He wants to maybe play c4 at some point. But Magnus just pushes his pawn to h4. Because to c4, he can play d4. And the bishop is unprotected here. So the queen at keeps attacking it. The c pawn cannot move ahead. And that's the reason why Arjun is thinking if he can bring his knight here, then he's really threatening c4 because after d4 there is c3 and the bishop is protected by the knight. So Arjun plays his knight to b4 and Magnus instantly moves his queen. You see how Magnus is ready with his moves. That's amazing. And now Magnus wants to keep building the attack. So Arjun moves his king to the side. It's just prophylaxis so that later on for any attack he's ready to meet it. What does Magnus Carlsen do? The most natural idea is to go knight h2. He first brings his bishop out to f4. And Arjun pushes his pawn to d4, making way for the knight to come here. The bishop can open up on this diagonal. Black's position looks pretty nice here. He has play on the queen side. Also, if at the right time you manage to get in c4, that would be epic. But for now, c4 is not possible because the d4 pawn is hanging. Magnus brings his bishop back. Look, if you take here, pawn takes, and then plonk your knight on c4 square, that would be a positionally nice one for white. But Arjun will of course see it, and maybe he can just move his knight away to d5. No, he makes a mistake. Can Magnus now simply take here, take, and play knight d2? No, he plays b3. Arjun can now move his knight away from b4, but he doesn't move it. He goes bishop b7. Magnus gets, gets another opportunity to take on b4. And he, this time he doesn't leave it. He takes, pawn takes, brings the knight back to d2. This is a beautiful outpost here for the white knight. And also Magnus wants to trade the bishops here on the long diagonal. Arjun down to 1 minute 20 seconds. He takes on g2. And Magnus takes back king takes g2. And rook comes to c8 putting pressure on the c2 pawn. But of course, the knight is going to sit here like a king. Like the best piece on the board, it goes there. But Arjun says this is not really an outpost, right? A6, B5 can come in. So actually, Arjun can kick it away. He plays A6. 
The knight is not a very solid piece there. Oh my god, this is getting very intense. If b5 comes in successfully, the c2 pawn is a perennial weakness. Magnus defends it with rook a2. That's not a happy move you make, but then you have to save your weaknesses there. Arjun will push the knight away. Yes, he does. b5 on the board. This is a battle of ideas. Knight comes back. Maybe Magnus... Now, Arjun should take on a4 because if rook a4, c2 could hang. That could be a positional sacrifice there by Magnus. But Arjun doesn't, is not interested. He brings his rook to d8, making way for the knight perhaps to come to the game Why f8. Now takes, takes, and the queen comes out to f3. King g8, defending the pawn, not to forget these little tricks there. Magnus now brings his queen up the board, queen e4. If at the right time he can get in g4, g5, that would be a big attack coming in. The knight moves away, knight comes to f3, suddenly the other knight will come to d2, white's position does look very harmonious for the time being. Bishop comes to c5, also the rooks can double on the a-file, Magnus looking good, knight d2 played, and black brings the knight to d7, time to double on the a-file. Let's do it, Magnus Carlsen does it, maybe he can enter from a6, bishop goes back to b6, Keeping an eye on the c2 pawn, so Arjun not letting Magnus unleash himself. Can Magnus start attacking on the king side with g4? There he goes. g4, h5, g5 coming in. This is going to be a huge attack. What should Arjun do here? It's not so clear. He goes knight c5, attacks the queen. The queen comes to f4 and Arjun plays f6. What a move. If you take here, the queen is hanging. And this is not easy because Arjun is creating counterplay now with rook f8. Maybe can move the queen and suddenly the f3 knight is not very solid on f3 square. There's a pin on the long diagonal and Magnus is not so comfortable. He goes knight e4. He plays his knight to e4 offering a trade. And he's looking forward to a trade of queens because any endgame would be superior for him. He has a better structure. Well, Arjun goes rook f8 and he says to Magnus, I am threatening fe5 with play on the f file but magnus does not really worry about it he goes rook a6 and he's putting pressure on the e6 pawn because if you take here fe5 i take back with my queen arjun takes it he takes here and magnus can actually take back the pawn queen takes e5 very sh solid move but magnus has 46 seconds arjun has just 20 well i think arjun will keep the queens he goes queen b7 and he pins the knight here Magnus chops the pawn. King h8 is a must. Don't play rook f7, Arjun, because there's a tactic. Queen takes c8. Don't fall for it. No, he falls for it. Magnus instantly chops off the rook. He's happy because now rook a8. Simplified position. Magnus is a pawn up. This should be easy for Magnus because he's the king of endgames. But Arjun quickly moves his bishop. He attacks the c2 pawn. That's the thing about Arjun. No matter how bad his position is, he keeps fighting. He never gives up. Rook b5, he takes on c2, Magnus chops another pawn, he's now two pawns up, knight comes to f5, look at how Magnus quickly moves his knight, he knows he has 40 seconds, Arjun is down to 10 seconds, but Magnus is not very happy because Arjun's resistance is insane, g6 Arjun, no he misses that chance, that one chance he got there, g6 would have been an excellent move, just equalizing the position, but g6 now played, Although Magnus now has knight h4 and the g6 pawn is hanging. He plays bishop e7 attacking g5 but g5 is defended. Arjun forgets that part. And now Magnus has two extra pawns. He attacks the bishop. This should be easy win for Magnus. Plays his rook to c6. Offers a trade. You can't trade the rooks because if you do it, the c pawn will simply queen here. So that's not possible. Again, great, great resistance offered by Arjun. Bishop d8 important, but he misses it. Knight e7. And this time now Magnus is winning. There's a fork with the rook and the bishop. He goes rook c1. And now take on c7. He takes it. So that... But Arjun's making a queen. No, there's a check. King has to come back. g6, Magnus. And it's a forced mate here. Because rook g1, you go king f3. No, he misses it. And now Arjun maybe gets another chance. He makes a queen. We have a knight and three pawns versus rook position. Is this a draw? No, d5 is winning for white. It's the only move to win. Don't ask me why. There are some deep lines. King f3 is a mistake because now king g6. Arjun is back in the game. King f4 
and now rook f1 just put your rook behind these pawns and this should be possible to draw no he goes back on the other direction king e4 is a mistake you will see the bar jumping up and down because this is such a complex end game to play in few seconds it's not at all easy arjun does have an objective draw here he pushes the pawn in comes a check king f4 play the rook back to d1 arjun no he goes rook e2 that's also fine you push your pawn to f3 and now rook d2 important move no he goes rook e1 this gives a chance to magnus because magnus can now play knight d4 he has to coordinate his knight two pawns and the king this is not easy but he does it knight d4 that's a winning move rook d1 and now bring your knight to f5 no he makes a mistake again can't take this pawn because there's a fork but king g7 is a draw no he goes king f7 this is not good king g6 back there's a check now king f5 and white is winning because you don't give the black king the g6 square he plays king f5 magnus down to 11 arjun down to two seconds in comes a check this time the g pawn is queening and even though he wins the pawn the g pawn is too strong arjun takes here but magnus in the end has an extra pawn he makes a queen and brings his king in and arjun resigns what a game magnus is so tired arjun asks if the end game was a draw magnus says i don't know what a fight this was between these two champions arjun not giving up right till the very end but magnus also so resourceful always creating his chances and extreme joy to play to see both these players playing blitz because they really are very very good at calculation and taking their chances i am sure there will be many many battles between magnus and arjun that we will enjoy in the years to come